Hey guys, it's Carolina here from Carolina's Crafts and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have another scrappy Christmas crafts tutorial for you guys. And if you guys have been here for a while or all of this year, you guys know that Tiffany and I, so Tiffany from Let's Get Scrappy and I, we've been doing this scrappy Christmas craft series every single month, trying to use up our Christmas stash which we're realizing is quite impossible because we just have so much Christmas paper. But the goal was to use some kind of Christmas paper every single month to try and get rid of some of our stash since we just have so much Christmas paper. So I did a tutorial on this album, which I'm going to do a flip through for you guys in a second, and then the tutorial will follow. And then I'm not sure what Tiffany did, but I will have her video linked down below. So after this video, definitely go check out Tiffany's video to see what tutorial she has for you guys. And if she doesn't have it posted at, at the time when this video is supposed to be posted that we've been posting, I will be adding it to the playlist. Um, and the playlist you guys could check out down below as well. So also if you missed any of the videos from January till now, you can check out all the tutorials that we have done so far on albums, folios, some kind of like project that we've been using up our Christmas stash. So check that out in the description box down below. Okay, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna show you guys the project and then the tutorial. So let's get started. Okay, so for this project, I decided to make an album with a floating hinge, which I actually learned from Tiffany. I don't know if she's done one on her channel, but I did learn this from her. Um, and you guys are gonna learn it in my video. So this is my front cover. It says Merry Christmas with some flowers. And I apologize if you guys hear the thunder. The thunder is crazy and it just got really dark outside. It was sunny the whole time thundering. And now it just got really dark and it's about to like pour any second now. Um, I have a ribbon tie closure, this little Christmas tree, the spine just says joyful. The back I did some paper piecing with whatever paper I had left over and added my logo sticker. And then when you open this up, this might look familiar because I did a project share um, on an album that I created that I didn't have a tutorial on because I just was using up my scraps when I did that project share. Um, and it's just something I came up with and a lot of you guys really liked it. So I thought I would do that for my tutorial for, oops, for this scrappy Christmas craft series for August of 2022 this month. So here we go. So here I just have plain, you can add a pocket, you could add a waterfall, do whatever you want. I wanted to leave it like this. I have a pocket here with a little embellishment that says joy. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I use the Farmhouse Christmas Collection 6x6 paper pad. So if you have some 6x6 paper pads you want to use up, this will work. Um, you could use any 6x6 paper pad for this. But as you guys could see, I did have to mat on the covers just to make the 6x6 uh, paper work. Whereas here on the inside, it'll fit no problem. Um, but on the outside, you do need to um, do some paper matting just to make sure it fits. Otherwise, your 6x6 six six would be a little too small for the covers. Um, so I used 16 sheets of a 6x6 six six paper pad. I have 8 sheets left over and the tiniest little like scraps, like strips and things, but I'm keeping and hold on, holding on to them um, in case I do a waterfall in my next project because these are great little pieces in between the waterfall but I have eight sheets left. Very pretty collection. Um, I did use some of my scraps in the end for my tags, so I was able to make three tags. So here's one of them. I used some scrap ribbon I had in my stash and it's just plain white on the back. You definitely could hear that thunder. <laughs> um, then you flip this page and I have a full page here for photos, full page here for photos, and then a little cut apart in between um, that says, may you never be too grown up to search the skies on Christmas Eve, matted with some green that you could journal on or add a photo to. And then this flips open again, like this, full size space for photos. And then here is a tuck spot. So I didn't have enough scraps to add another thing here and there's no like larger cut aparts in this collection. So you can do a tuck spot there though. And you can um, add photos if you'd like. Okay, then the next page looks like this. 
Here I have an angled pocket and I have another tag that I just made with some of my scraps that I had left over at the end. And that just looks here, but obviously you could add more photos. You can add photos here. Then this flips here and here I used a die cut to make a little tuck spot. So if you wanna add and tuck some photos under there, you totally could do that as well. Just know that that opens up. Oh, and I forgot to mention that this uh, album is for sale in my Etsy shop in case you guys are interested. Um, so it is available. I'll have the link down below to my Etsy shop down below. Um, then the next signature, I have a little waterfall. So just two kind of piece waterfall, but you could add photos here and here and here and here. Wow, that thunder is so loud, guys. It's literally about to pour any second now. Um, and this just says, have yourself a merry little Christmas. I did also have the die cut sheet from this collection, from the Farmhouse Christmas collection. So I did use some of the die cuts. Um, I just got that in like an Echo Park warehouse box, mystery box sale um, at one point. And I think the Farmhouse Christmas I actually ordered during one of their sales. Um, then here I have another page for full size photos, or you could always add two smaller photos. Here I have a little flip up, it says comfort and joy using one of the die cuts from that sheet. And I put a little ribbon here. Um, so you, the person, the recipient knows that they could just open this up and now they have two more spaces for photos. Then the next page looks like this, full size space for photos and another pocket. And I just have another tag that I made using up some scraps and some scrap ribbon in my stash. And then here on the back, full size space for photos and another little pocket. This has a little stuck down tag, but you can um, tuck some goodies into there as well. So you could tuck some photos in there. I wouldn't add in too many, maybe like a couple, um, just cause this one's not a gusseted. Actually, none of them are gusseted pockets. They're just glued down on the three sides. Um, but yeah, that's what this album looks like. And if it looks familiar, it's because I did um, the, the album I did with the little soldier on the front is the same style. So if you guys were looking for a tutorial for that, here you go. So again, make sure to check out Tiffany's tutorial next after you guys are done watching this video. Check out my Etsy shop in case you guys are interested in purchasing. And on top of that, I am going to have a cutting guide for you guys on my coffee website, a cutting guide for how to make this so you guys could cut out your pieces in advance. Again, I do make those just for you guys because I do have everything written down myself in case I want to recreate it, um, but I type it up for you guys so it's easier for you guys to follow along. So please consider making a donation on my coffee website and just buying me a coffee. Um, that's very, very helpful so I could keep doing them for you guys. Um, and yeah. All right. So let's get right into the tutorial and let's get started. So for today's tutorial, we're gonna start off with some chipboard. So I have two pieces that measure six and a half by four and a half, and I already have tape on the back of mine, and then one piece that measures one and a half by six and a half. So this is gonna be the base of our album, and if you guys are interested, I do have the cutting guide up on my coffee website. Please consider making a donation. Um, the coffee guides I make for you guys to make it a little bit easier if you're not just a full like visual person and you need kind of like a concrete written plan. It also helps with just cutting out all the pieces in advance um, just to follow along that way. So please consider making a coffee donation on that website, but otherwise it is available for free to you guys, the cutting guide. So if you guys find that helpful, make sure you go ahead and download that. So with those pieces, I'm also going to need two pieces of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. I'm just using some that I have in my stash, 65 pound weight cardstock. Um, let me see which way to arrange this. I think I'm going to arrange it. Yeah, this way. Or I could do it. Uh, actually, I could do it this way too. Let's do it this way. I'll arrange it this way. So I'll put my tape on this piece here and we got to combine two pieces of cardstock. I'm always going to cut off the extra, but for now this is what we're doing. All right. So I got that. I'm going to peel that tape back a little and now I'm going to attach this piece along that tape. Okay. And peel back the rest. Once you have it straight, burnish that and we are good to go. 
So I'm gonna start off by, I'm actually gonna place this piece first because all this extra, we're gonna end up cutting off. And this seems like enough space. So where that seam is in the center, um, that's where one of my bigger layers of chipboard are gonna go instead of my spine. Sometimes I do the spine, especially if it's like a bigger spine. But here I see that I have enough room to do um, the bigger piece on the spine. So I'm just gonna press that down and I'm gonna turn it because I like to work sideways. I'm gonna grab my quarter inch tape and this is gonna act as a guide of where to place my next piece of chipboard, which is gonna be my spine. Okay, so you place that down. My spine, the one and a half by six and a half piece is gonna go next. So I'm gonna peel back all of this tape and I'm gonna line it up with that guide of my tape, just like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna put down another piece of tape to be my guide for the next one. And I just ran out of tape. <laughs> so that's as far as that goes. It's fine, it'll work. So I'm gonna peel back this next tape on my other piece of chipboard. And again, line it up here. And if you want to measure, I know Tiffany does, she like marks an inch. I don't do that. I eyeball this part. <laughs> but if you want to measure an inch and an inch, you could totally do that. I just don't. <laughs> um, so next off, I'm going to cut off some extra. So I'm going to leave about an inch or so here and about an inch or so here. And then we might end up cutting a little bit more later on as well. So I'm going to bring in my cutting mat and I have to miter the corners. So I do use a corner miter tool. I always use this to make sure my corners always end up good. I will have it linked down below for you guys like I always do along with the chipboard that I use, this rotary cutter, the mat, everything. I link everything for you guys down below in the description box. And again, all the measurements and everything, the cutting guide is on my coffee website, which is also linked down below for you guys. All right, so I'm just mitering these corners and I already see that I'm gonna have to cut off some more chipboard later, but we will do that, like I said, later. Okay, so I now have this and I'm gonna put my tape down. This tape is also linked down below. This is like a, it's like a half inch tape, like a little bit shorter, I think, than half an inch. So I layer this down. I don't do any more than two layers. Once I get to two layers, I just cut off the rest of the cardstock. We don't need to be wasting tape. Two layers is all that you really need. And it works just fine for me every single time. But again, if you find that you want to do three layers, do what works for you. If that's how you always do it, you could do you. You don't have, just because I do it a certain way doesn't mean that you have to do it this way every single time, but you totally can. That's the beauty of a tutorial. You could do it exactly the same, or you could put your own spin on it and do it how you do things. All right, so I got my two layers down. I'm gonna cut off any extra uh, cardstock that I have here. I don't need it. I literally have some to cut all around. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm just gonna burnish all of my tape. Make sure that's stuck down so that when I start peeling it back, it'll come off nice and easy, which we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna peel back the top. I'm gonna fold in any extra overhang tape that I may have. Oh, I forgot I gotta peel in the centers also. So the center I'm gonna peel back. Okay. 
So now I'm gonna fold this up against my desk and just go back and forth, working that paper in, trying to prevent any cracking. Usually works, sometimes it doesn't, but most of the time it does. Okay, so I got that and I'm gonna go into my bone folder and press down. Then I'm gonna tuck the corners in. So all you're doing is taking your bone folder and pressing kind of that down and in. And that kind of helps helps limit um, some of the sharp corners that you might get when folding your paper. Oops, wrong side. Nope, we're doing this side next. It's fine. Okay, I'm gonna tuck some of my tape overhang here. I'm gonna tuck that in. I don't wanna see that. And again, I'm gonna work this in back and forth, going a little lower each time until I'm ready to fold completely. Flip it over and burnish. Feel free to pause this video at any time if you guys need to catch up. Then I'm gonna tuck these corners in. Okay, and I'm gonna do the sides. Peel the tape back, tuck in my tape, and work it in by pressing against my desk here. Flip it back over, burnish that, and now the other side. Peel the tape, tuck in any tape overhang, work the paper in, Flipping it back, back and forth until I press down completely. Flip it over and burnish. Then I'm gonna go in to my center and just press along lightly along those creased lines. You don't wanna press too much because you don't wanna rip the paper. You don't wanna make a hole in it, but just enough so that when you go to bend it, it bends easily. Work it in some more and that's good. Same thing with this one, work it in. And we now have our album base. So that's what that looks like, super cute. Okay, let's work on our, um, actually we gotta put just like a black piece of paper here. So my piece of paper for the center measures six and a quarter by three and a half, and that's just gonna go right here. So what I'm gonna do is put some tape on the spine in the center, okay? I don't wanna go all the way to the top because I know my piece is shorter. So I don't wanna go all the way. And this one happens to fit perfectly. It's like one and a half inch, I think because um, that's what my spine is. And then on the piece that I'm gonna be gluing down, I'm gonna put some tape along the edges here on the outsides, because I wanna make sure it sticks down completely. So my hinge in this album is gonna be a floating hinge. So we're gonna decorate the center here first, and then the hinge later is just gonna be onto that decorated piece. Okay, so I'm gonna peel this back and I'm gonna peel these back. I'm also gonna use some wet glue I mean, you don't really need to with this just because this isn't a hinge. Um, but I'm just doing it because that's just how I usually do it. So just putting some glue and I'm gonna put this in the center or approximately the center of my um, spine. And then I'm gonna press down. So we're just covering up some of that. You can go all the way across. I usually don't. I'm gonna be putting down paper anyway. So for me, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm gonna start creasing these 
again and then folding them and creasing some more, working that in, making sure I have a good base to cover it up with patterned paper. Okay, same thing here in the corners, not the corners, sorry, you know, kind of like where it dips down. Again, you don't want to press too hard because you don't want to make a hole. Then as soon as you have some of a crease, just work it in back and forth. Don't press too hard. All right, so now our whole album base is done just like that. I'm probably going to use it this way just so that the seam is on the back. But that's what that looks like. Looking good. So let's work on our floating hinge. We are not going to be attaching this because again, you do need to put down your pattern paper first onto your spine. I mean, I guess you don't have to, you could always do strips later, but I, I'm just going to put down a piece of pattern paper first. So I'm not going to attach my hinge yet, but my hinge is going to measure two and a half by six. Okay. And we're going to score on the two and a half inch side. So this way, at half an inch, one inch, one and a half, and two. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I did. You have your piece that measures two and a half by six, right? So along the two and a half inch side, you're scoring at half an inch, one inch, one and a half, and two. And I totally got this from Tiffany for the floating hinge. She didn't come up with it, but you know, like she showed how to do it and I like it. So then you have five kind of spaces here. On the back, I'm gonna put down a piece of tape on the outside pieces. Okay, just like this. And those pieces I'm gonna fold in onto the one next to it. So let me fold that down and burnish. So that outside piece is gonna get glued to there. And then this outside piece is gonna get glued to here. Except that I need to flip this. Yeah, no, this is good. So those are gonna get glued. And then those are facing in. Now the other ones are gonna face out like that. Okay, so I'm gonna burnish that down now. And then I'll actually glue it together. Okay, so those pieces that I said are gonna attach are gonna attach now. So go ahead and fold those in, burnish that with the tape. Same thing on the other one, fold it in, burnish it. And then these fold back the other way and this is my floating hinge. So this is gonna get attached to here when um, I, I'm ready to attach my pages and once I have paper covered on the center here. Now the only thing here is that I do see some little overhang here. If I fold this, I have some overhang. I don't want that because when I glue this down, if I leave that overhang there, it's not gonna glue down completely. So I'm gonna fold that back and just cut off the overhang. Sometimes that happens if your paper's uneven, like the Michaels paper tends to be sometimes. Um, so it's fine, just make sure you double check and cut it off before you glue anything down because the last thing you need is your hinge falling off because you have other paper in the way. We don't want that. Okay, let me check the other one. There's a little bit here also. Okay, so you just want this to be able to sit flat and be able to be glued flat. Okay, so I will put down some tape onto that as well on my hinge for when I'm ready to attach it later just down the center 
And the other two pieces are like my actual hinge. That's what my pages are gonna get attached onto. But with that, I do want the thinner tape. So it's a good thing I have the quarter inch tape backups, of course. And I'm gonna attach that onto here on the edges of my hinge. So front and back. Okay, just like that. And this is smaller than the half inch because I don't wanna cover that whole hinge. Usually when you attach your pages, you leave a little bit of a gap at the bottom, at the bottom of the hinge so that you can move your pages a lot easier. So that is our hinge that we're gonna be attaching later. So for now, we'll just put that aside. To make your base pages, you're gonna need two pieces that measure 12 inches by eight and a half inches, okay? If you do not have 12 inch size paper, combine two eight and a half by 11s together, cut it at 12 inches, that will work perfectly fine. Don't worry about the seam, you're gonna be covering it up with paper anyway, it's fine. So once you have your 12 inch by eight and a half inch piece, you are gonna put this onto your scoreboard and you're going to score on the 12 inch side at six inches all the way down the middle. You're gonna turn it to the eight and a half inch side. You're gonna score this at four and a quarter and you're gonna have one full piece. On any side, you're gonna cut on along the 12 inch side on that six inch mark, you're gonna cut up to the center score line just like I did here. Okay, so that's all you're gonna do. Then you're gonna go ahead and fold this along the six inch side. So fold six inches, turn it, and on that cut piece, so if you have it cut the other way, then turn it this way, but I have it cut here. So you're gonna then fold this one forward, fold the other one backwards. So you end up with this piece that's gonna be our signature page. Let me show you guys that one more time in case that was confusing. So you're gonna start off with your 12 inch by eight and a half inch piece. You're gonna score down the center at six inches on the 12 inch side. Turn it again to the eight and a half inch side and again, score down the center, which is four and a quarter, all the way down. And then you're gonna cut it at, along the 12 inch side from that six inch score line up to that four and a quarter inch score line, just cut right into that center, looks like this. You're gonna fold it on the six inch line, turn it and then fold along the four and a quarter inch side forward and back opposite directions, okay? So you're gonna have two of those. Those are your signature pages. So I got both of mine done here. And now we're going to work on putting the pockets and embellishments and other things like that. So your first pocket is going to go onto your first signature. I'm going to put one onto the side. So your first pocket is going onto your first signature. It's going to measure two inches by six inches. That's it. Once you put down your paper, you'll then glue down this pocket on the three sides. So here, here, and here and this is your little pocket. So I'm gonna be paper clipping this cause you know I wanna put down my paper first. This is just how I always make my albums. I paper clip a lot of the pages before I'm ready to glue them down because a lot of the time I do some paper first. And especially here, if I'm working with a scrap, I might need a scrap that goes from here to here and a little bit here. I don't need to go all the way and that's fine. You don't have to go all the way. So that's your first piece, your pocket. You're gonna turn this page. I now have the center. Now you're gonna need a piece that measures three and five eighths by four and one eighth. On the three and five eighth inch side, you're gonna line that up at the top. You're gonna to score this at half an inch, okay? Go ahead and fold that, burnish it and I have a little flat piece, just like that. So I have this little hinge here. This hinge here is gonna get attached to this page here. 
just like this, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this. This you could glue down already. It's not gonna interfere with the decorating of your paper. Okay, when you glue this down in the center, just make sure that you could still close your page comfortably. So go ahead and close that and then press down because you don't want it to get into the way. Okay, so we have our little flap here. Flip that over to the left and you're gonna add another flap right here. So this other flap is bigger. It's gonna measure four and a half by six. On the four and a half inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch right there. So when you put this into your scoreboard, line up the four and a half, score half an inch all the way down, okay? I'm gonna fold that. And mine's this way, but I'm gonna flip it so that my hinge is on the right hand side. And I'm gonna put some glue on there. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and glue this to the edge here on the right hand side. And notice how it's a little bit shorter, just so that nothing interferes when we're closing it. And where did my bone folder go? Anybody see it anywhere? Nope, oh, I found it. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and burnish that, open it up, burnish some more. So that's what this looks like. You have this flap here, then this page is gonna open up like that and close. I'm not gonna attach a magnet here. I just kind of want this as like another little page in here. You can if you want, you could magnetize that. I'm not. I'm happy with this just the way it is. And then it folds to this page. On this next page here, you're gonna have a piece that measures four and a half by three and a half, okay? And you're gonna score at half an inch, one on each side. So half an inch on the four and a half inch side, half an inch at the three and a half inch side. And all I did was miter this corner where the two scored lines meet. Then you're gonna put this into your scoreboard, line up that four and a, or line up that three and a half inch piece right here. Or is that four and a half inch? No, three and a half inch piece. So once that's folded up, you're gonna line up this corner here. And I just turn it a little bit on an angle. I didn't do any measuring, but you want that top corner just slightly down to make an angled pocket. I feel like this is a piece I need to show you, so let me grab some other paper. I'll show you guys. So I'll grab a piece that measures three and a half by four and a half. I already happened to like cut my pieces. I thought it would make it a little bit easier, but I feel like this one might be a little tricky. So three and a half by four and a half piece right here. I'm gonna put this into my scoreboard on the four and a half inch side. I'm scoring at half an inch. I'm gonna turn it to the three and a half inch side, score at half an inch again. Okay, I have, that's where my two lines meet. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that on an angle. So I'm just mitering the corners. I'm gonna fold along those two lines. And now I'm gonna put this into my scoreboard. So my folded pieces are on the top and the left. Okay, I'm gonna fold those and I'm gonna put that top corner in there and just cut it on an angle, however you wanna do it. It doesn't have to be a big angle. It could be a small angle. I just kinda just turn it and then I cut all the way through. And that is my angled pocket just like that. So I'm not gonna glue this down yet either, just because I want to make sure that I put my pattern paper down first. It's much harder to figure out your measurements for your pattern paper if you already glue this down, because right now the way I could do it is just put this down on my pattern paper and trace it and cut it a little bit smaller. But this is all you're gonna do for your angled pocket, just like that, okay? So I already had mine done. Actually, I think they came out pretty much the same. One of them has a little bit more of an angle, one has a little bit less. It doesn't matter. Well, however you do it, just make sure when you do your paper, you do it with the pocket just so it matches up. 
So I'm going to go ahead and paper clip this here. That's all I'm doing for that. You guys know I added in all my pockets later. This page I'm going to leave blank, flip it to the back, and this page I'm going to leave blank as well. So there's the angled pocket, blank, blank. It's just going to get patterned paper. Now for my next signature, we're going to start doing this next one now. So I'm going to bring in my plain signature, put the other one aside. All right, so for my next signature, I'm going to start off by making a waterfall on the front here. So you're going to need two pieces that measure four and five eighths by three and one eighth. On the four and five eighth inch side, you're scoring this at half an inch. So I got my two pieces here. Go ahead and fold those. And these, again, I'm paper clipping, guys, because I need to put down my pattern paper first. But when you arrange these, one's gonna go here, folded, Wherever that ends up being folded, your next folded one is going to go right underneath it, just like that. That's all you are doing, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and paper clip these because I'm not ready to glue them down just yet. I got to add my pattern paper in first, but that's where they're going to go, just right in the center. So go ahead and turn this page, and now we're here. Now you're going to put down a blank pattern paper here. This page is going to get another little flip up. So I have another piece here that measures three and five eighths by four and one eighth. Along the three and five eighth inch side, I'm going to score this at half an inch. So just like this, I'm going to score this three and five eighths along half an inch. Go ahead and fold that. And I'm not gonna glue this down yet either. It depends on my scraps. But this piece, I'm actually gonna put down in the center here. So when I cut my pattern paper here, I wanna make sure it's the same size and then I'll glue this down. And then I'll put down another paper in between like here and the other pattern paper, okay? So that's how I'm doing that. Go ahead and paper clip that, but it's just like a nice little flip up page in the middle of the page. All right, so now that we have that little flip up page kind of um, paper clip there, we're gonna turn this, we're gonna have another pocket here. So you're gonna grab another piece that measures two by six. And again, when you put this down, you're just gonna glue it on three sides. And that's it guys. That's basically this whole entire album, just like that. Um, I did, I think in mine, add another pocket here on the first signature. So I had one on the first page I had the flip page here and I added another pocket right here. And all I did here was add another pocket here. Now you could do it just with pattern paper if you'd like, or you could have the black border. I think last time I just did pattern paper, but I'm showing you guys with the black because I think for these next ones, I want the black border. So I'll cut my paper, pattern paper a little shorter. So that's it. That's where that flip up page is, that flip out just like that. And so I'm going to have another pocket here, another two by six. So all my pockets like that, my little tuck spots are two by six. The only difference is that angled pocket here. And you guys can see the pages are all a little bit different. Here I have a waterfall. Here I have a center flip up. Here we're going to have another pocket and everything else is just a blank page. So that when you attach this to your album later, again, you have to have your pattern paper here first. Then you'll attach this just on that center piece. And then all of your signatures, your two signatures in that center will get attached onto the hinge, just like this. So they'll sit in the hinge. Okay, it looks like I'm gonna need to miter my corners just a little bit on my hinge, which is fine. Um, but that will attach here just like that. And then your other one will attach on the other one. But when you attach it, you want to glue that down there and then you want to glue the top or you could glue the side depend depending on if you want like a top tuck spot or side tuck spot it just depends. But it looks like I'm, I'm going to need to miter my corners on my hinge a little. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, which just means that I'm cutting from score line to the edge of the hinge and just cutting on at an angle. just like this. Okay. There you go. So that's it guys. That's pretty much all I'm doing. 
um, for my album. I have my album base done. I have my signature. Now I'm ready to paper mat this. All right, guys, so we are done with making this album. Obviously, we have to attach all the stuff later on, but I can't really show you guys that because I have to do my paper matting first. So I guess, I, I mean, I can show you guys. I just have to do a separate video. So what I'm gonna do for this video, for this tutorial, because I know this is like a new different kind of hinge, I will do another video coming up some point after this showing you guys how I'm paper matting everything and then how I'm attaching everything so I will do that with you guys it's going to be lengthy it's going to be like a process video showing you guys everything um, and I'm not going to have like a cutting guide for the uh, pattern paper measurements so I will do that in the video though I will tell you guys the measurements as I'm cutting them but it might be a little lengthy video showing you guys how I put the whole album together that you guys saw in the beginning of this video while I showed you guys the finished product. So I will have another video going up showing you guys all that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys check out Tiffany's tutorial next. Check out the playlist down below where you, guys, where you guys can see all of the tutorials that we have made so far this year for our Scrappy Christmas Craft series. And check out the cutting guide which I will have linked down below to my coffee website and you could download the cutting guide for free there. So that is everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this fairly easy tutorial and I will see you guys in my next crafty video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.